you out of hell We came here to call you From all answered Didn't forget my mask Do you still recall Watching all those stars So isn't it time To save your soul And spread like your sun isn't it time to keep you close so you can hold on tight to make you forget no matter what you say no matter what you do No matter where you are, so isn't it time to save your soul and spread light in your sun? Whoa, isn't it time to forget all the past? How could it ever be? This way How could it ever be so cold So So cold this way So cold this way So Uh, yeah. So I don't know what this did to you, um, it was a performance, and as a musician, for me, I hope it provoked some emotions inside of you, because that's the aim as a musician, to do that. But um, part of my passion in my life is really about music, and another part, I'm also a scientist. And as a scientist, it is very difficult to work with emotions, because they are you cannot grasp it. They're not tangible, you cannot work with them in a concrete way. And that was what I was a little bit struggling with, and I was looking for a way to, yeah, to make those emotions more tangible. And that's where I came into the IPAM, that's the Institute for Psychoacoustic and Electronic Music. It's a subdivision of the musicology department of Ghent University. And I was doing there a research project focusing on music and emotions. And I came there into contact with two scientific areas which really inspired me a lot, and one of which was biofeedback. And biofeedback is a scientific area in which people, they're making small devices to measure your bodily reactions, such as, for example, your heart rate, your stress level, or even your brain waves. Psychophysiology is a scientific area in which people are trying to figure out, using those data from those biosensors, which kind of emotional state you're into. So, and those two fields really inspired me and really gave me a way to work with emotions in a concrete way, to make them tangible, and also to integrate them into a scientific and an artistic project. And it enabled me to combine another passion that I have in my life, and that is mathematics. So, some people say the hard science, okay, I don't agree with that completely. So I first started off as being a pure mathematician, so I did a PhD in the field of algebraic group theory. That's a combination between algebra and geometry. And after that, I turned over to 
some people say the dark side in uh, pure mathem mathem mathematics uh, people, but uh, okay, I don't care. I turned into the field of statistics and applied mathematics. Now, I could combine my mathematical background and my passion and my musical background and passion into a project which we're going to present here uh, shortly after. It's called the EmoSynth project. Now, EmoSynth project, it has two words, emo and synth. It's abbreviation, it's maybe a little bit, what is it about? Emo is emotion, comes from emotions, of course, and synth comes from synthesizer. So it's a sort of, a, you could say, an emotionally intelligent synthesizer. So the Emo synth is a system that can automatically generate sounds and music to get you in certain kind of, we call it, predefined emotional states. Now we integrated the whole thing into a movie context, such that now the Emo synth is a sort of a system that can automatically generate a personalized soundtrack, so especially made for you, who is using the EmoSynth, underneath your favorite movie, such that the impact of the movie, so the visuals and the music, is the emotional impact is as good as it can be, especially made for you. Now, how would it work in practice, the EmoSynth, if you would, for example, use it into a cinema context? This would mean that you would have headphones, you have your own soundtrack, especially made for you, perfect for you, and your neighbor would have another soundtrack. So. Now, in developing the EmoSynth, we had to use several kind of disciplines, several kind of scientific areas. I say we because I didn't develop the whole thing by myself. I got support from the Flemish authorities and we worked with a little team. So you see one of the programs, so we programmed together with uh, Stiff, that is Stiff, the programmer. Um, now, the first scientific area that we were using in developing the system was effective computing. You see here a funny, a funny little robot, you could say. And in this scientific area, people are trying to figure out how to make an emotional connection between man and machine. The other area that we were using was biofeedback and psychophysiology, which I already mentioned. And the third one was, that we were using was, it's related to Darwin. We were using a sort of an machine learning technique. It's machine learning is just how to try to make a computer learn to perform a certain task, and we were using genetic programming, which is based on the rules of Darwin. Now, to use EmoSynth, suppose you want to use EmoSynth, what do you have to do? Well, firstly, you have to train, be trained by the EmoSynth, so that means you have to attach yourself with biosensors, heart rate measuring devices, and stress leveling measuring devices to the EmoSynth, and then the EmoSynth in the learning phase, it will try to figure out which kind of music and which kind of sounds it has to generate to provoke a certain kind of emotional state inside of you. Once this training phase has passed, all this information, this data, is saved into the computer in a sort of, we call it, an emotional response profile, and that contains all the information of which kinds of sounds and music get you in which kind of emotional state. And once you've done that, you could use it as a performance tool. And as a performance tool, you could, for example, ask the EmoSynth to make the favorite soundtrack for you for the Broken Circle Breakdown. Suppose, for example, that you don't like country and western music, so you would want to have another soundtrack underneath the movie. What you do is, first has to be done, is that the mu movie has to be annotated, we call it, by the musical director. That's a preparation of the movie. So the musical director has to he goes over the first scene of the movie, and then he has to decide, I want here the emo synth to generate music that really has a strong emotional impact. Then he comes to the next scene and he says, mm, okay, this should be a little bit less, and then there's a romantic scene, again, a strong emotional impact, etc. And once the whole movie is annotated, it can be put inside the emo synth, and then you can use it in the cinema with your headphones. The only thing that the emo synth has to do is read the emotional response profile for you, from the training phase, and then it can generate a soundtrack for you. Now, we will shortly demonstrate a short fragment of a movie with, a, with music that's being generated by the emo synth. The movie is The Phantom of the Opera, and the training person was a training person that was trained with the emo synth a couple of weeks ago. So, we will start it.
So this was a short fragment that you saw. Normally, well, it takes the movie that's being made by the Emosyn takes about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So you would see more evolutions here. So I don't know what this did to you. Probably some people said, okay, it relates to me. Other people say, okay, it doesn't so much, but that's normal because the music was trained to one certain person. Now, when we present the project, the Emosyn project, I got some questions sometimes that people say, okay, what is the next step that you want to do? Do you want to replace musicians, human musicians, by computers? And then my answer is very straightforward and short, no. I don't want to do it, and I also don't believe as a mathematician that it would be, ever be possible, because I might be a scientist and a mathematician, but in the end, I will always, and, and will always, always be always a, a musician uh, who is using his real emotions, so, yeah, thank you.